Hi everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'll be making pyridine by decarboxylating niacin. So this is niacin right here. It's also known as nicotinic acid, and that's because it's a hydrolysis product of nicotine, the same nicotine you might find in cigarettes and other tobacco products. But uh, niacin is uh, also known as vitamin B6, and you can find it online as a nutritional supplement in its pure powdered form. Now you can also buy it in capsules, but uh, I think you have to take the capsules apart. So I, I paid a little extra, I think it was like maybe $14 for half a kilogram of niacin powder. And we can go ahead and start with this. Very convenient for the synthesis. So I'll be using the copper chromite decarboxylation catalyst that I made in a previous video at the rate of two grams of catalyst per mole of, uh, of nicotinic acid here, or niacin. Um, so that, that's about one gram for every 65 grams of uh, this powder here, which makes a very efficient conversion, and we don't use a whole lot of catalyst. In fact, I would need uh, just under eight grams of catalyst to decarboxylate this entire half kilo, although I will save some back uh, in this preparation just because I have other things I wanna do with this, like uh, niacinamide and things like that. You can see that decarboxylating simply means removing a carbon dioxide from a molecule, and you can see that's why it's called a carboxyl group, right? Because it's got carbon and two oxygens, or right? carbon, oxygen, carboxyl, you get the idea. This will pretty much proceed uh, quantitatively if we just mix up the prescribed amount of catalyst very well with uh, the niacin here, and then we'll put it in a flask, we'll heat that flask and distill off the pyridine, which distills over at like 101 Celsius. This stuff boils at a pretty high temperature, so we don't really have to worry about a lot of it coming over. However, the, the stream of CO2 is going to sort of act like steam distillation, and we will have some of uh, the niacin unreacted uh, left in some of the pyridine, in the pyridine. So we'll have to uh, redistill the pyridine afterward to remove any of this uh, niacin that's left over. The first step is to mix the niacin with the catalyst, of course. So I've got uh, 300 grams of the niacin right here. You can see it's just a fluffy, light, uh, bright white, maybe slightly yellowish powder. Um, and I've got 4.6 grams of the copper chromite catalyst that I prepared in a previous video, and I'm just going to add that and give it a good stir. This doesn't have to be completely homogenous because the uh, the reaction actually happens after the stuff melts, so it'll it'll get mixed together pretty well later. But uh, you want to get a good mixture going to start, and uh, you know, obviously, not just pour the two in on top of each other. All right, now that the niacin and the catalyst are evenly mixed, reasonably evenly, you can see it's sort of a gray powder now. I'm going to load that into a one-liter round-bottom flask to uh, perform the decarboxylation. This is where it's great to have jointed funnels since you can get the powder into the flask without getting it on the inside joint and having to wipe it off later to form a good seal. We'll be uh, putting a bigger funnel in here though I think to uh, increase the space I have. As long as I don't pour it too quickly, it should go in without a problem. Oops. And you can see this is about the maximum amount that can reliably fit into a flask this size without having too many problems with the nicotinic acid subliming up, up into the condenser and things like that. So anyway, uh, now I'm going to go set up for simple distillation and we can start to decarboxylate this to pyridine. Alright, so I've set up here for simple distillation. And you can see I've got my heating mantle with a lab jack here so I can raise and lower it to adjust the heat if I need to, uh, mainly to drop it in case the heat gets too high. I've got the flask with the powder in it right there. It's all nice and leveled out. You can see it's right at the height of the mantle, which is optimal. Um, we've got a still head here with a uh, thermocouple in it. Here's the, uh, the thermocouple wire. Um, and that's just going to measure the still head temperature digitally rather than uh, with a thermometer, which is easier to see, especially on the camera. I have a 300 millimeter Liebig condenser there. Uh, we're not condensing anything particularly volatile, so that'll work just fine. And a 250 mil collection flask there, the receiver. So that'll collect the crude pyridine. So now the goal is to heat this uh, relatively slowly such that we boil off the pyridine, but we don't boil it off so quickly that we take a bunch of nicotinic acid with it. So we're gonna try and keep the still head temperature um, as close to about 100, maybe 110 as possible. Anything over that we'll have to uh, cool this down a little bit, otherwise we'll just start reducing our efficiency. So anyway, I'm going to uh, turn on the mantle here and we'll just uh, get this heating and uh, we'll check back on it when it gets hot. I've been heating this for approximately 15 minutes and uh, you can begin to see the reaction. There's some fog of uh, subliming nicotinic acid here on the flask. And also if I lower it, sorry about the squeaks, 
you can see that the nicotinic acid has sublimed away from the bottom of the flask and uh, has formed this greenish black sort of uh, solid here. So if I shake this, I might be able to get it down, but eventually it will fall by itself and uh, then we'll begin to produce pyridine at a significant rate. All right, I've been heating for about 25 minutes now, and you can see that uh, the level of the powder has sort of shifted down, and there's some little volcanoes there in the middle where you can occasionally see a bubble of uh, some thick black liquid come through. Um, originally, this haze of nicotinic acid was covering the flask uniformly, but then uh, pyridine started to come through fairly rapidly and wash it back down, so there's definitely some action happening in there. And you can see that there is pyridine con condensing in the still head, but uh, not quite in the condenser yet. Uh, there's also a haze of nicotinic acid which is formed, which is going to, of course, be carried down by the pyridine into the receiver, which is why we're going to have to redistill this after we run the decarboxylation, just to remove that excess nicotinic acid or niacin, right? So, uh, now I'll just keep heating this. You can see we're just now starting to reflux. Uh, still heads at 68C. Not bad. A few more minutes and we'll be taking pyridine off this. At the output pipe here, where the CO2 is just being vented to the air and uh, thus sucked up through the hood, if uh, carefully wafted, since pyridine isn't super toxic, uh, the smell of pyridine is definitely detected, and it's uh, distinctly terrible. It's like rotten fish slash public bathroom. Just, it's a disgusting smell, and you can't smell it for too long without wanting to gag. So, anyway, it's a good sign. You can see now that it's actually snowing inside the flask as the crystals get too heavy for the walls and fall back in. That's pretty cool. I wish I could uh, clear an edge of this. Maybe if I use my heat gun or something, I could clear a window into that. We could observe the snowing effect better. If I tap the mantle, you can see I can make the crystals fall. <laughs> and we are collecting pyridine drop by drop with its characteristically terrible smell. Alright, I lowered the mantle a little bit because the stillhead temp started to get a little hot. I uh, exceeded by a bit, ended up at about 118 Celsius, which uh, isn't too bad, but you can see a whole bunch of the nicotinic acid started condensing higher and higher up on the flask, and I was risking getting it over in the stillhead, so this requires some, uh, some care. We're on the way back down now, which is a good sign, and uh, I'm just going to raise the mantle back up and uh, turn down the power setting on the heat control over there. And uh, hopefully we can find a stable value. Still collecting pyridine at a fair rate though. Got them out, maybe 25 milliliters there. So what's happening here is there's an equilibrium that needs to be established between the stillhead temp and the flask temp here. We need to reject as much nicotinic acid as possible while passing pyridine. It's sort of like a fractional distillation, but you can't really use a column because if you did it would just get clogged. So uh, basically the bath, the decarboxylation, uh, needs to happen at pretty high temperature. And at that temperature, the niacin has a significant, uh, significant vapor pressure, even as a solid, or in this case, the liquid mixture. So it tends to sublime or boil out and then deposit on the walls of the flask whereupon it falls back in. Now we don't want it to end up in the still head, so we need to keep the temperature between the still head and the top of the flask here um, different enough that we don't get a whole lot of, of niacin through, but we let uh, as much of the pyridine through as possible. We want to return the niacin to continue the decarboxylation. However, if we keep this too low of a temperature, then the decarboxylation doesn't happen at an appreciable rate and we'll be here all day. So you can see we're, uh, we're pulling pyridine at a decent rate. And I think uh, this mantle setting should be good. I'm at uh, like one third according to the power controller over there. All right, so I've been uh, this has been running for about an hour, and I've added some foil here to increase the uh, rate at which the uh, pyridine is coming over. Um, you can see that the flask is pretty much encrusted with nicotinic acid, which has to be knocked down periodically. But I haven't gotten any through the still head, which is kind of nice, and the still head temperature is. Uh, is pretty good. So uh, to get this off the flask walls, um, you can knock it around a little bit, but uh, better yet is to apply a flame from like a torch or something like that. Just be careful you don't torch one, one spot on the flask for too long, or you'll break the flask obviously. But uh, And we need to get all this uh, this nicotinic acid down in the bath so that it can continue to react, because otherwise the, uh, the production rate comes to a halt since it deposits on the walls. So I'll just do that.
All right, there we go. We've knocked off uh, the vast majority of it, so I can uh, raise the mantle again, and uh, we'll resume heating until we have all the pyridine collected. And you can see that uh, there's quite a bit already. Uh, theoretical is, uh, I think, just around 180-ish milliliters or 300 grams. I have to check my notebook, but uh, that should be about three quarters of the way uh, of the volume of this flask, so maybe a little over halfway, should be something like that. So we're about uh, halfway there at the moment, I think. All right, it's been a total of about three hours, and you can see the uh, niacin's getting really yellow in the flask there, and uh, the pyridine has pretty much stopped coming over. So I think this is just about done. Um, I could probably torch some of this down and uh, get it to react a little bit, but there's pretty much nothing left. It's just some tar. So. I think this is done. I'm going to call it done and uh, we'll lower this mantle and see what this looks like. Yep, and you can see that it's just a moonscape there of catalyst and tar, so that is pretty much all of it. Um, I'll try and torch some of that nice and off the flask and see if we get any more purity over, but I, I doubt it's going to be significant. So as you can see, there's pretty much nothing left in the flask. Um, getting a drop or two of pyridine here and there, but uh, I'm just going to let this cool down and uh, catch whatever remaining pyridine I can get, and uh, then we can go ahead and redistill the pyridine. So I set up for a simple distillation, and I've got the crude pyridine product here in the flask. It looks to be close to the theoretical amount, so I'm pretty happy with that. To increase the yield, I've actually not bothered to clean out this uh, condenser apparatus. I left this as set up for the decarboxylation, and that's so we can recover these little bits of pyridine that are left in here. Now, some nicotinic acid does come over at the beginning of the reaction, and uh, throughout the reaction, in fact. But uh, you can see here that even though this stuff has cooled to room temperature, no additional nicotinic acid is precipitated out of the pyridine. So, it can be reasonably concluded that there are milligram amounts uh, at best of the uh, nicotinic acid left in this pyridine, so waste not, want not, there's going to be milligram amounts uh, left in the distilled pyridine anyway because we're distilling it from a solution with nicotinic acid. So um, it's uh, pretty wasteful and sort of not useful to uh, have taken this apart and cleaned it. Anyway, I've got a weighed bottle here and I'm going to obviously cover the yield from that, so that's pre-weighed. And uh, yeah, we'll just get the heat going and we'll uh, strip this over. While we're waiting for that to distill, uh, I'll show you really quickly an easy way to calculate the percent yield that we're going to get from this reaction, or how much we should expect. So uh, I know a lot of you asked me about this, so I'll show you really quick. Um, so first you just need the molar mass of each constituent. So we got the niacin here, uh, which is 123.1, and the pyridine is uh, 79.1. And if you just divide the two by each other, you end up with uh, 0.643, which means that if you multiply this by 0 0.0643, you end up with this, right? So you get 64.3% of the weight of niacin that you put in, in out in pyridine. And since we use 300 grams of niacin, that means we're going to get, multiply that by 0.643, that's 192.9 grams of pyridine. And its density is like 0.98, so it's going to be just over that. It's probably about 200 milliliters. Um, in volume. So that's how you do that pretty easily. And uh, we'll compare this final value with whatever we weigh in the bottle after the distillation is complete. And that is taking place just over there. And speaking of which, we are just beginning to boil and the vapor head is now moving into the still head there and yeah, we'll be collecting pyridine in no time. Pulling it over at a pretty good clip now. All right, we're getting close to the end here. You can see there's just a little bit left. We're not going to distill the dryness, of course. We don't want to drive over any nicotinic acid, but the flow rate right through the condenser has slowed considerably and, in fact, is stopping as I speak. So, um, yeah, we're not collecting very much more pyridine. As you can see, we've got quite a bit collected. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop the mantle before we start pulling over the uh, nicotinic acid that's left in there. Moving the mantle out of the way will keep the plume of heat from uh, 
continuing to heat this flask, so it'll cool down fairly rapidly, and that'll leave the uh, small amount of impurities that we have down in there. Stop it from boiling, and just coming over, and yeah, there's a bottle of purity. So let's go ahead and weigh that. All right, so here's the product of one New Year's Eve. We've got a uh, some purity in the bottle here, and survey says it weighs 167.1 grams, which is. Uh, you can see 192.9 was possible, which means this is an 86.6% yield. That is not bad. Anyway, so I've got this pyridine. I'll be using it in a number of upcoming experiments. Um, tomorrow is uh, January 1st, 2016, and marks the first day of the 2016 season of lab videos, which is cool. And that also marks the first day of sponsored lab videos by all of you patrons. So thank you very much to everyone who's donated in the month of December. You are making the January videos possible. That said, uh, if you want to donate, my Patreon account link is in the bottom. Uh, feel free to donate as much as you want. We've got donations as small as 25 cents. Anything to help me out, I can keep making cool videos like this. Uh, I really like making this video, by the way. I like making videos. And if you like the video, please press the like button. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment. I'll try and answer. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more of these. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, I have some additional lab notes. Uh, remember how I was talking about when I reuse the distillation setup, how uh, you can tell if there is any nicotinic acid in the pyridine um, by seeing if it crystallized out? Well, this is what I'm talking about. So you can see here, the remnants there, that's the nicotinic acid that came over with the pyridine, and you can see it's uh, well, crystallized out now that it's cool. So that's what would have happened up there if there's any significant amount. So the pyridine we have is quite pure. Another note is that uh, for cleaning this flask here, this is the reaction flask, the initial decarboxylation flask, you see it's got some tarry crap in the bottom as well as some catalyst. It's been soaking with warm water, and you can see warm water has removed pretty much everything else, which is water soluble. But to remove that last bit of gunk, uh, all you gotta do is add a little bit of HCl, let it sit for a little while. Let me show you what I mean, I'll get some right here. And we'll swirl this around, and you can see it's, uh, you can see by the color that it's taken off the, uh, the residue quite handedly. And um, yeah, in a minute or two, uh, this will be ready to just be uh, neutralized and dumped in the heavy metals waste. Chromium, after all.